In this unit, we will try to go a little bit deeper on how we calculate performances of uh, steam electrolyzers. So going back, the reaction that uh, is the electrolysis of steam and water is, of course, uh, a molecule of water dividing hydrogen and oxygen. But so let's try to see what is exactly the device that operates. So what we have is an electrochemical reactor, that is the steam electrolyzers. What is in inlet to the uh, unit is steam. And what our three main outlets are oxygen, a molecule of course, hydrogen, and we may have again some steam that uh, didn't uh, complete the reaction. And of course, everything has to be fit with electrical power better if green from renewable energy. So what is exactly the energy equilibrium of the unit? Of course, we have an inlet power that is electrical energy and can be calculated as the electrical power. So that uh, is the voltage multiplied by the current. And for what is the outlet, the main product is, or the only product is chemical energy. So chemical energy is the one in the inside hydrogen, in the chemical energy of hydrogen, and can be calculated as hydrogen multiplied the hydrogen flow of uh, gas multiplied by the low heating value of hydrogen. So efficiency can be calculated easily as a ratio between outlet power and inlet power that can be also um, evaluated at the energy level, but with the same values or similar numbers. And is the ratio between the hydrogen multiplied by low heating value and the voltage multiplied by current uh, as power inlet. So if we try to go a little bit deeper on this reaction, we can see that there is a, a relation between hydrogen uh, produced and current. And this is mainly uh, uh, linked by the uh, reaction of the composition that connects directly um, hydrogen reaction in, with current. So we know that current can be uh, defined as Faraday multiplied by the mole flow of electrons. And in the case of no Faraday losses, so if we consider that the reaction uh, involves all our steam is uh, uh, in reacting with uh, electrons and there are no losses uh, parasites, we can uh, directly relate the mo uh, mole of electrons uh, to the mole of hydrogen. And so we can finally have a new definition of efficiency, in which we can uh, evaluate the ratio between low relative volume, uh, voltage, and twice Faraday uh, constant. This means that uh, the efficiency is, can be directly related only to operating voltage of the electrolyzers. We can make a further step theoretically and we can try to see what is a reference that is uh, a hypothetical efficiency of one. If we fix one, the efficiency, we can define a new um, parameter that is called thermoneutral voltage. That is the ratio between low heating value, low heating value and twice Faraday. Technically, the thermoneutral Theoretically, the electrolyzers operate at 100% efficiency. Uh, again, uh, low heating value uh, is uh, numerically and uh, the same amount of uh, um, enthalpy difference mainly. And so we can, again, uh, connect this uh, um, equation to the variation of enthalpy like we did in the previous unit. And we can so plot again what was shown in the previous uh, unit about the thermoneutral voltage. And as correct, connected to the variation of enthalpy, we have an increase of thermoneutral voltage with the increase of temperature. Now, let's go back to uh, the electrolysis operation. Uh, and we try to plot your um, example of a polarization curve. So what is the uh, characteristic curve of an electrolyzer? And it is the variation of voltage as function of current density. Uh, as in all electrolyzers, also for steam electrolyzers, this curve is increasing in the slope. So, and starting from a reference point that we can define as open circuit voltage, so when current density is equal to zero, at this point is uh, strongly related, is uh, connected to nurse potential and itself is connected to uh, the reversible voltage of the cell. And then we have the losses related to current losses, what are called polarization losses, that um, moves our cell voltage 
at higher value compared to reference ones, and they increase. In this case, it was really simplified with a linearity, pure linearity, but we tried to make a simple example to show how this amount is uh, could be linear. And it so starting from the OCB, it increased as starkly a function of current density of uh, J with a, what is called area specific resistance that is a sort of constant, uh, um, uh, can be constant. Um, or in this case, it's a simplification. So we simplified as a constant resistant of the cell. Uh, so what is important is that our cell, our voltage of the cell increases from an OCV up to higher values. So if we focus on the reaction and the, on the voltage of the cell and the relation with the tumor neutral, we can mm, see different um, scenarios. First of all, tumor neutral. Uh, in this case, as we said, the outlet power and the inlet power are the same and we can so have the cell operating at thermo neutral this is usually can be defined uh, as a constant value is around 1.23 so if in this case of our hypothetical uh, polarization curve we can operate the cell at thermo neutral voltage and we can define thermo neutral conditions that uh, so correspond to for example also thermo neutral current density then what we have is if we have a, a power output, so the amount of hydrogen produced higher than the power inlet. This is in this case technically feasible. It means that our cell operates below thermoneutral voltage. So somehow we need to feed the reaction, the, the cell, with the additional amount of energy. And this energy is also usually in the form of heat and has to come from the external. So in this case, we uh, have as an inlet not only the work in terms of electrical power, but also of heat from the external. The other case is that power output is lower than power inlet. It means that our cell operates above thermo neutral condition. So the cell uh, is producing additional heat compared to the one it's necessary to feed the reaction. And so there is a heat losses that has to be um, pushed out to the, from the electrolyzer to keep it at constant temperature. So if we go back to the scheme of the system, then we know that there is steam that, that enters to the, into the, to the electrochemical reactor. We produce uh, chemicals, we have power inlet, but from the energy point of view, we may have an exchange of heat with the external. So if we don't exchange this uh, uh, heat, it means that we operate at thermoneutral, and that's the, why the reason is called thermoneutral. So we don't have, and we have at 100% of efficiency. Uh, in alternative, we may have an energy input that can play an important role in terms of efficiency and allows us to operate below thermo neutral voltage. Uh, vice versa, if we have amount of losses, internal losses, uh, uh, higher than the one required to feed the heat uh, necessary for the electrolysis reaction, then we will have an extra production of heat and we will have uh, heat that is going to be released to the atmosphere. So we can have an um, um, advanced uh, definition of efficiency when we consider not only the inlet of the power, but also it if supplied to the system. So the system can operate um, at uh, before terminal condition in a sort of 100% efficiency. And then if we con considering not only the power inlet, but also the heat inlet, but then when we move, of course, uh, to higher value of current density, so to higher value of voltage, then we start losing it. That, of course, is not uh, in the efficiency uh, as an inlet and not even at a, as a useful outlet. Um, and so we have um, uh, a, a real system operating um, at uh, with losses and so with efficiency below 100%. Why this is important? Because what happens about uh, electrolyzers uh, in terms of steam is that uh, we can operate in this condition uh, above or at thermoneutral or below thermoneutral condition. Like we see in the graph an example of three types of electrolyzer, alkaline, PEM, and solid oxide electrolyzer. Alkaline PEM are both water electrolyzer. And we can see that there is, since the OCV, the voltage of this system is already close uh, to the thermoneutral condition. So it is impossible to operate, to produce hydrogen in condition of thermoneutral. So we always operate above thermoneutral and we always have uh, um, heat losses 
versus the external end efficiency below 1%, 100%. Vice versa, solid oxide electrolyzer, since OCV is connected with um, uh, reversible voltage, we can have reversible voltage below thermal neutral voltage. So in our uh, current uh, polarization curve, we can have a real operating condition producing hydrogen, both uh, at thermal neutral, in which case we can operate the system in uh, total equilibrium with no heat losses, 100% efficiency, but it is also possible to feed the electrolyzer as a chemical reactor with external heat and to operate it uh, below thermal neutral condition. Or of course, if we want to achieve high hydrogen production, high current density, we can operate above thermal neutral and so to have a trade-off with the amount of hydrogen produced and efficiency that of course decreases as previously explained. Thank you.